This is going to be our view for the next five days as we sail from the Bahamas to the Dominican Republic. If you've been following along for a while, you'll know we've had some pretty tough passages, like our very first one from Texas to Florida. Or how about that time we sailed from Florida to Nantucket and saw 56 knot winds? This is so scary. This week, we're traversing what's known to sailors as the Thorny Path. And while this isn't our longest passage to date, it's a sailing route that reminds even the most experienced of sailors how wonderful the destination can be. Fish on, fish on. No way. And spoiler alert, the Dominican Republic is absolutely stunning. I get to actually focus on what I do best, and that's eating. I'm sure a lot of you watching will understand that and relate. This morning we are gonna have some yellowfin tuna over some cream cheese on toast, which is one of my favorite breakfasts most recently, uh, because if you've been watching along, you saw our, our fishing video with Captain Jeremy. We had some action-packed day of catching, well, you gotta go watch and see. We've just left Spanish Wells. We have had quite the busy weekend getting ready for this long passage that we're expecting to take anywhere from four to five days. So we got checked out of the Bahamas actually on Friday, knowing that we would be waiting out the weather over the weekend. And then we were able to do our final provisionings. And this past weekend has been crazy weather. We saw storms at night, storms during the day, rain all day. Basically we've been cooped up on the boat and didn't get to enjoy Spanish Wells as much as we had liked because it is just such a charming little town. Honestly, overall guys, I don't feel like I'm quite ready to leave just yet. I love this country so much. I've enjoyed every moment of our time here in the Bahamas and I'll explain a little bit later why I don't feel like I'm quite ready. But for now, we're getting ready to come out of current cut and then we're gonna get the sails up. We are now in route to the Dominican Republic. So we have decided to go inside, so we are gonna hop down the Bahamas chain of islands, which will give us a little bit more protection uh, than going outside on the Atlantic side. So while we did decide to go on the inside to get more protection, you know, it's kind of like the Gulf of Mexico right now. Mm -hmm. This, there's not any breaks between the waves. The waves aren't big but there's a lot of them. It's kind of like a washing machine out here. We're seeing upwards of 24 knots, uh, which means we do have a reef in the main um, and we're sailing upwind. The way the I can describe it is it oh. Oh, <laughs> feels kind of like the boat is galloping. Yeah. And I don't like the galloping motion at all. Yeah, it's we're, uh, we're sailing 30 degrees uh, apparent right now. For all um, those who say catamarans can't sail closer to the wind, See you. We're going. <laughs> We're doing. Right now it's at oh, yeah, 30, seven, 38 to 40 degrees. Right. 7.3 knots. Forth. Um. Not the coziest sail we've ever had by any means. There's a lot of white caps out here. Yeah. <sighs> As I brace myself. Yeah. Here. When Dixie curls up in the corner here, I can just tell she's not feeling super great. And when she starts to not feel super great. I like to keep her still because if she's up at the helm and then down here and back up and back down, she will surefire get sick. So I just gave her a couple of our hemp treats that we like to give her whenever it's storming. And I'm hoping that will just calm her down a little bit. I don't feel like she's necessarily like uncalm, but I just kind of want to make her sleepy. So she'll just lay down and stay in one spot while it's uh, pretty rough out here. So she doesn't get too sick. You're okay, cop. You're okay. Yeah. So the waves have picked up. We are actually about to thread the needle past one of our favorite anchorages in the Bahamas. In fact, if you download our top five remote anchorages freebie, uh, it's on our website or on this QR code here, you'll be able to see this, but 
It's uh, off of Cape Eleuthera. We're gonna go through this little cut, if you will, and it's very, very shallow on either side and very small, but we have the perfect wind angle to be able to sail right through it instead of continuing to go south. Uh, I'm a little nervous about this, not gonna lie. Um, just because it is so narrow. Right now we have 10 feet underneath the keel, which means we're in about 14 and a half feet of water. So right now we're showing three foot one underneath the keel, 2.8. Uh, as I was saying earlier, I was expecting it to get to in the twos. Anything less than two, I'm obviously starting to get nervous. Time flies when you're having fun and sailing good. We're doing about seven knots right now and the seas have calmed down. It's an absolutely beautiful sail. Almost dinner time. I've been working on the computer. Babe, what's for dinner? Burgers with some roasted carrots. I really haven't filmed anything because I've just been working away on the computer. But yeah, it's our first night of the passage. Going well. We're gonna eat good tonight. Ooh, baby, you are spoiling me tonight. Emily loves her sweet plantain, so that's dessert. We've got our burgers, we're ready to eat. It is a paper plates kind of night. When we travel, we do try to keep paper plates on hand because it just makes life so much easier. It's one less thing you have to do because who likes doing dishes in rough seas? Plus, it allows us to save more water when we're on passage. We don't have to worry about making as much water. Well guys, as the sun has set, it is now time to start prepping the boat for our night passages. And doing that, uh, we're thinking about safety. So we're gonna get our life jackets out. We're gonna get our lanyards out. We don't wear them because we feel so enclosed inside our boat here. Like we don't ever go around the sides under passage very often because we do have the forward door if we need to get up front. But nevertheless, if we do go out on deck, then we throw our life jackets on. And so I always just hang them up here. Um, I'm not expecting it to be rough or uh, to be any worse than it has been all day today. But nevertheless, always be prepared. So I'm gonna get those out, get them hung up where they're just easily accessible. Same with the flashlights or the Q-beams uh, and headlamps. One of the things that we learned early on is make sure that if it's the two of you or whatever your crew is, make sure you guys have designated life jackets. Don't just go buy all blue life jackets. Uh, because if you need to grab your life jacket in a really quick situation, um, you, we already have these set to fit me. Obviously, the blue one's for me, the red one's for Emily. And if I went to go put Emily's on, it certainly would only go through like one arm, right? Like it would not fit me. Um, so it's really important that when you have your safety gear set up, uh, you set it up for the person. So those of you that have been following along, you know that we've had issues with our dinghy for a year now. In fact, last year, I just went crazy with the 5200. This past year, we were able to scrape all that 5200 off, spend another $500 to get the proper glue for the rub rail. And now, after three months of being in the Bahamas, that glue is starting to come off. And then, of course, we've got two, for sure, leaks in it. Uh, one of them I keep patching. I really want a new one. I know exactly what I want, but it's so expensive. I don't know what we're gonna do. They keep yeah. firing off. Yeah. So there's, it looks like there's two of them on that, at least. I wonder what that would look like from the drill. Oh my gosh, I don't know. That's so cool. Look at that. Guys, we have been like within two miles or three miles of that launch. And it's always a spectacular event. Like when the rumble comes through, like, and you can hear it and and see it and it shakes the the entire boat just shakes that's so cool i'm looking up above the boat right now and em you've got to go to the front of the boat and show them this moon oh my goodness the moon is incredible as well like it's just coming over the horizon what a cool night this has been well here we are sailing to the dominican republic we are just off the southern end of eleuthera in between eleuthera and cat island and that rocket just came right over top of us so freaking cool.
Well, welcome to day number two of our Dominican Republic passage. You know, they call this the thorny passage for a reason. The seas got pretty nasty, but we were motoring right into the wind because we wanted to get as far east as possible before we make our turn south. So we are now looking at San Salvador just in the distance. I asked Emily yesterday, I said, hey, uh, it's getting pretty nasty out here. We're beating into the wind here. Don't you think we should take some, some seasickness medication? It was probably about three hours too late. And the way my stomach works is either it comes up or we stop moving. And stopping moving wasn't an option last night. So it was probably like, I don't know, four o'clock. You were sleeping, I just had my bucket here. We were getting real intimate. Yeah. You and your bucket? Yeah. We've got the full main up, so we are gonna turn here and turn into the wind. Unfortunately, that means that we're gonna be sailing uh, to, to get any angle on this wind. We're gonna be sailing really towards the Crooked Islands, which is further west than what I was really wanting, but if we're gonna sail at all. We're gonna just have to beat through these thorns, as they say. Good morning from the edge of the Bahamas. In just a few hours, we will be out of Bahamian waters. Kind of makes me sad. The night was pretty easy. Um, I was able to make it till about 4, 4.30 until I had to crank up an engine because we lost our wind angle. Um, but the night was peaceful. Much better than the night before. Uh, we did not really feel much at all yesterday because we were both just so completely lethargic after being up pretty much all night the night before. Uh, we were getting very, very fragmented sleep, maybe 20, 30 minutes at a time. And as we all know, that just does not farewell to make you feel good the next day. So I know I'm feeling better today. Um, even though I was up all night on watch, I was able to get some little naps in yesterday that has me feeling a bit better. Cole, are you feeling better today? Oh yeah. He says, oh yeah. Oh, he says he's a hundred. So I'm just checking predict wind, uh, weather routing, and you know there's a few things we've got in mind. As I've talked to you guys about this being the, the thorny path, the last thing I want to do is fall too far south chasing the wind because that's going to put us in Luperon or you know a different part of Dominican Republic. One that we don't want to go to, and two, especially right now, going further south would put us closer to Haiti which is in turmoil right now. So checking this just to double check and make sure my thought process is still the same. We can actually see that all these spaghetti models, if you will, are the different weather models uh, and they are lining up. So they actually show us cutting in. This is Meguana here. So we can see it going all the way down. It's gonna have a nice wind on our beam until about tomorrow around 4 a.m and then the wind just completely dies out to four knots and we can't move this boat at four knots so we will be motoring then as soon as we turn underneath turks and caicos we're going to just beeline it straight for samana bay ah try not to spill Did you guys know that there is a thing called motion fatigue? Uh, Emily was actually looking it up earlier, and unfortunately, I think she's got it. These first two days were, uh, were pretty rough, so with her getting sick and not getting much sleep, um, we try and do shifts, we try and do three hours on, three hours off, to try and get a full three hour sleep, but you never do, you're up every 30, 45 minutes, maybe an hour at best, um, because you hear something or you just get disturbed. Oh guys, I've had the hardest time waking up today. Ah, the motion fatigue is real. So anyways, I am sitting at my computer though and trying to get some admin work done, moving a little bit slow, but I don't want to get too far behind. So when we get to the DR, we can actually get off the boat and go play and I just responded to an email actually inquiring about our flotilla 
which I'm so excited to tell you guys about. If you haven't seen that episode that we published earlier in March, we held our first flotilla in the Abacos. Seven days of sailing and island hopping and curated adventures with 10 other adventure loving people. And honestly guys, it went better than we could have ever expected. It was our first flotilla. We didn't really know what to expect, but it was absolutely amazing. So we're excited to tell you about the next one. It's in November, the 16th to the 23rd, and we're partnering with Barefoot Yacht Charters out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. If you're interested in it, you can scan this QR code. More information will be sent directly to your email. We have cabins starting as little as $3,000, double occupancy cabins. Oh my goodness, something's jumping right here. Look, 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 look. Tuna, 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 tuna. Look at that. They're coming this way. Look at that. So I don't know if you guys can see it there. There's the, uh, the tuna on top. It's either gonna be bonita skipjack or blackfin from what I can tell. They don't look that big, so I'm, I might have the wrong lure here. Look, there's a shark. Uh, white tip, white tip. Woo! Oceanic oh my white goodness. tip. Yeah, yeah, Oceanic yeah. white Look tip. Look at shark. that. Fish on, fish on. No way, baby. Fish oh, on. he's running. Oh my goodness, yeah, that shark is that, gonna get that, it. That, that shark, is, that white tip is gonna get it if I'm not careful. Don't say that. Don't say that. Dixie, stay in the boat. Come on, baby, let's go. If I'm go. not careful, that shark will get it. Come on, baby, let's go. Come on. All right, we gotta go back to the boat. He's stripping line. All right, hey, hey, I need you to go turn the boat around. And just turn the boat around. Oh no, there's the shark. No, no. Ah, dang it. Did he just get he it? Got me. The shark, I saw the shark go after it. I gotta say, that was a fun shark feeding mission. Uh, unfortunately, I would have not, I would have loved to have not fed the shark uh, and actually got the fish. Wow, babe, wow. Yeah, right? Look at you. Someone's gotta kick around here, right? We'd starve <laughs> otherwise. Guys, we are now passing the southern end of May Iguana. And I gotta say, I'm so sad that we can't stop. This is one of the islands we wanted to go to. We were hoping to jump down here before making this trip and I'm just looking at the charts and I have so much FOMO. There's a land and sea park here, which I imagine because this is uh, one of the most southerly uh, islands of the Bahamas, I imagine it's pretty untouched. And I'm just dying to know what's over there right now. We actually uh, just redid the weather routing. And I was looking at anchorages to see if we could swing it, but we can't swing it. If we stop for any point of time, we're gonna one, lose wind, and two, we've got a front that we're trying to beat. So yeah, this is where we're at. I just, uh, I don't feel like I'm ready to say goodbye to the Bahamas yet. We've spent a total of nine months here. We've covered most of the Bahamas and I just love it. It's my favorite place ever. So many amazing things have happened here. This is where we did our first charter uh, right after we got engaged back in 2021 and that's what really lit the fire in us that we wanted to buy a boat and do this travel thing. And then the following year, we eloped in the Bahamas and spent 12 days on a catamaran charter. And it was just amazing. That sealed the deal for us that we were not just thinking about doing this life, but we were going to make it happen. This is where I learned to free dive and where I speared my first fish. We've met so many amazing people all throughout the Bahamas. <sighs> Memories for a lifetime. But you know, that's why we bought a boat. We bought a boat so we could be untethered and go to different places and not be stagnant. But I gotta say, it does, it hits me in the heart a bit hard to leave because I just, I don't feel like I'm quite ready yet. So guys, I'm interested. Is there ever a place that just feels so bittersweet? For you to leave every time you visit if so leave a comment below with where it is and why you feel that way i'd love to hear about it i just turned us a few degrees back to the port so i'd get the head cell out i was hoping i could 
get a good enough angle on the wind that I could turn our one engine off, but unfortunately the wind is just not consistent enough right now. It's days like today that I don't mind being at sea, but first 24 hours of this passage, oh, just not been super fun at all. Also, as I'm walking around the boat, I have to take a quick second and mention the sheer amount of salt crystals on this boat. It's absolutely insane how fast everything just gets covered in salt. It all feels so yucky. Of course, I had to uh, taste the fresh sea salt. And let me tell you, whew, that is the saltiest salt I've ever tasted. I don't know how a salt can be saltier than others, but this salt is salty salt. Saltier than the Ragged Island salt when we harvested with Nino, the island salt man. <laughs> well guys, we've made it over the halfway mark now. Uh, we are only 24 miles from Turks and Caicos and we are finally sailing again. Currently right now I got 9.6 on the wind and we're doing 5.4 so not bad so we're plugging along here it is a beautiful sunset here behind me okay so i just woke up or emily just woke me up she is done with her shift it's time for me to take over um and we've lost all wind uh we have zero wind now so we're gonna drop the the main sail and two days ago, we noticed a little bit of chafing uh, in the, the halyard, main halyard. Um, and of course, if you're not familiar with Dyneema halyards, you have a strand of Dyneema through the middle with basically a woven chafe guard, if you will, all the way around it. All of the, the chafe guard is here. And so it's literally like um, a sausage casing and it's too it's big like to get. It's on itself. Yeah, it's like, exactly, kinked like on itself. All right, so I went ahead and grabbed some electrical tape. And the last thing I want is for this to bunch up um, as we obviously have to drop the main. So as this goes up, the last thing I want is for this to essentially bunch up like that. So I'm starting way up here uh, and I'm, I'm just gonna tape it all the way back my thought process is if I just start way up on the top here, uh, I'm like 24 inches or so ahead, then by the time I get down here, uh, it's not gonna wanna bunch up. So has anyone else cut the bacon in half? I started doing it recently and I've actually enjoyed doing it because it fits in the pan so much better. And then you just have nice little bacon strips. So now that I have the halyard squared away, at least temporary. Um, it is time for some breakfast and our sweet potatoes are starting to go bad on us. I just realized that. I'm gonna cut them up and we're gonna have some sweet potatoes, bacon, and eggs. We still have 117 nautical miles to Samana Bay. As soon as we get there, we will turn in, and I think it's probably about another, don't quote me on this, but probably 15 minutes, or 15 miles from around the corner um, into the peninsula. And I cannot tell you how excited I am to get there. We've got six and a half to seven, maybe seven and a half knots, right at our port beam, 90 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this head sail out. Maybe we can motor sailor all the way in and pick up a, a little bit of speed. So I forgot to film it guys, but we just had an amazing poke bowl from the tuna that we caught in our last episode. It was so beautiful. I posted it on Instagram, but I forgot to film it. There's some, There's more. some more. Thanks. Fully ate all the rice, so I was gonna ask for some more rice, but I already know the answer to that. But it's not been dreadful, but the task we're doing is quite dreadful. We're working on our taxes. We figured if we could just get our taxes done, then when we get to the dock, we can enjoy the DR and not be doing this dreadful task because who likes doing taxes? Good 
morning guys we have almost made it it is 6 30 right now getting a peek of the sun coming up and the first look at all of these mountains in the background which is so cool i've been on watch the last several hours but we're still sleeping right now i cannot tell you how happy we are to finally be arriving it's been almost right at five days that we've been at sea and the trip overall has been really good like we have been super blessed this trip it's known as the thorny path because the trip down from Turks and Caicos to the Dominican Republic can be really nasty we unfortunately have had to motor a lot more than we planned and expected that we would but hey I'll take motoring with black calm seas and no wind any day over getting tossed around because that's never fun, but we are utterly exhausted. I honestly don't think I've been this tired since I was a morning TV news anchor, which is what I did before Cole and I bought the boat. I was waking up at three o'clock in the morning, going into work at four, and I was on air by five, and man, these last five days at sea just remind me of that. <laughs> Also reminds me that there is no amount of money that would take me back to that lifestyle. No, thank you. We are uh, just under 10 miles from making our turn into Samana Bay. We are headed to Puerto Bahia. We are super excited to get there because we actually met the owner of this marina at the Annapolis Boat Show two years ago, and we've been in contact with them ever since, saying we can't wait to get down here, can't wait to check out your marina and explore all the DR has to offer. So, alas, we are here. I'm excited for Cole to wake up and see what I'm seeing right now. Oh, well, good morning. You know, I am so happy that I prepped those breakfast burritos because I've got them in the oven now. We had them frozen in the freezer and they are looking so good. The only thing that could make this morning a little bit better is if I had some coffee. And no, I'm not really a big coffee person. Maybe I'm turning into one. But we ran a co out of coffee two days ago and I'm really starting to feel it this morning. You know what's really interesting about this trip is that once we get to the dock, we'll have completed 608 nautical miles. Last year, when we left the Bahamas, we did over a thousand miles to Nantucket in five and a half days. That just kind of goes to the thorny path and how we were beating up wind most of this trip. Guys, these mountains are so stunning. I'm so excited to be here. forgot to take down the Bahamas courtesy flag, which means I also need to put up the Q flag since we are now in the Dominican Republic. Uh, obviously, we're gonna have to check into the dock. Um, there is someone from the Dominican Navy that is actually stationed there as immigrations and customs officer. So we will be checking in as soon as we get to the dock. But in the meantime, I'm gonna put the Q flag up. The Q stands for quarantine, which just means that you have yet to check into the country um, and get all of your documents in a line. So once we have all of our ducks in a row, we'll be able to take this down and put the Dominican Republic courtesy flag up, which we currently don't have one. We'll have to buy one. As we are getting ready to pull up to the dock here shortly, I gotta brag on my little Dixie girl. 
Uh, this was her longest passage, so she has never done more than an overnight. So it's never been a problem using the bathroom on the boat. Of course, she's a high energy dog. Um, but since she is seven, she has mellowed out a lot. So when it's time to be hyper, she's hyper. When it's time to be chill, she's chill. And she has just been so chill this entire trip. At night, she would stay right by our side. If I was at the helm, she would like lay down here outside so she could see Cole inside sleeping and me up here. Uh, but she's done so good. As far as going to the bathroom, she would get a little nervous if water was splashing up from the trampoline. And I mean, I can't blame my girl. I don't really like bidets either. But when in that case, we would try to just slow the boat down and like turn in a position to where water wouldn't be splashing up through the trampoline. But she's done so good. So I'm so proud of her. So anyone who may be watching and wanting to cruise with your dogs, they're so adaptable. They just, they're good. You're a good girl. Thank you for the call. Sailing Vessel Adventure Cruise uh, looking to come in. All right, guys, we are all checked into the Dominican Republic. We are here tied up at the dock. Beautiful marina. I am so stoked to be here. And the process through customs and immigration was pretty simple. All we needed was our checkout document from the Bahamas, our boat insurance, and our passports. It was super smooth. Everybody here has been so nice. Uh, customs and immigration both said, you know, thank you so much. Welcome to my country, which was just really delightful to hear um, just how friendly they were. And and we're so excited to just explore all that the Dominican Republic has to offer in this new series that we're calling our DR series. So hope you'll join us next week. We're going to show you more about where we're staying here at Puerto Bahia and we are going to get out about and do some exploring. So if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that subscribe button, leave a thumbs up and a comment. We always love to hear from you and hear what you think. And if you have any story ideas for us, let us know, leave that in the comment as well, and we'll see you next week.